One of the most powerful ways to stimulate epinephrine, which is also called adrenaline, from these neurons that connect to fat and to thereby stimulate more fat mobilization and oxidation is through movement. But I'm not talking about exercise. There was a group in England during the 1960s and 70s that discovered a pathway by which subtle forms of movement can greatly increase fat loss. They were aware that some people overeat and yet don't put on weight. Other people overeat even just a little bit and they seem to accumulate extra adipose tissue. Now, this is long before all the discussions about microbiome and hormone factors and, uh, you know, it's long before it, many of the hormone factors besides insulin had even been discovered. What they did was they examined people who overate and did not gain weight. And what they observed was that those people engaged in lots of subtle movement throughout the day. In other words, they were fidgeters. And that's what they called them. What they found were people that overeat but don't gain weight as a consequence. And in fact, many people who had low levels of body fat had a lot of resting tremor, not of the Parkinsonian type. When they would talk, they would engage in very angular movements. They were sort of electric fidgeters, people that bounce their knee, people that have a head bob while they're listening, people that nod a lot, people that stand up and sit down a lot throughout the day, and people that pace burn anywhere from 800 to 2,500 calories more than the, exp the control group in the experiments that they looked at. And indeed, there's been a modern look into all this, and these numbers check out, that simply moving around a lot, even if those are subtle movements, greatly increases the amount of energy that you burn. And people who overeat, the people who can have the, the second or the third donut or donuts at all and don't seem to put on weight to the same degree, they are people that move around a lot even when seated. They are people that will often move their limbs very quickly as well. That there even have been studies that have explored other things that correlate with fidgeters. Fidgeters stand up very quickly at the end of a lecture, or they start to gather their things very quickly, whereas non-fidgeters don't. And in 2015, and again in 2017, there have been studies that have, been, have explored this using some modern metabolic tracking. And indeed, simply moving a lot, being a fidgeter, led to considerable amounts of fat loss and weight loss when people were ingesting the same amount of food if they overate, they were able to compensate and burn off that food. And if they were trying to lose weight and they incorporated this fidgeting protocol of deliberately trying to fidget more and move around during the day, they found that they greatly increased their weight loss anywhere from 20 to 30% increases. And in some cases, you know, there are the, always those few people who burned a lot more. It seems to work best in people who are already slightly overweight. That's great, and you can think about the protocols, but I want to nest that protocol in what I said before, which is that fat is controlled by these neurons and the epinephrine they release. You might say, well, how could these little micro movements lead to so much caloric burn? And that's where it really gets interesting. Rothwell and Stock and others that they worked with subsequently found that these little fidgety movements, the engagement of certain aspects of our musculature that are nothing like exercise, it's not these large coordinated or rhythmic uh, body movements, but rather subtle little bits of fidgety movement. And here I am doing a lot of fidgety movement as an example tapping the pen, this kind of thing. There, I was probably that kid in class most of the time. I was like, I try not to do it to irritate people, but I was definitely a knee bouncer. Um, I'm not particularly lean or, or not, but um, you know, I was definitely, this is a, a common activity for me. People that do that sort of thing, it turns out that it's not the kind of caloric burn that we normally think of, of like, oh, you're running, lifting weights, swimming, yoga, etc. Those subtle movements of our core musculature not just the core, but all our limbs and our, and our musculature, those low-level movements, they trigger epinephrine release from these neurons and they stimulate the mobilization of fat. And then that fat is oxidized at higher rates. So what's the protocol? Fidget. If you're really interested in burning calories and you 
already exercise and you want to burn more or you don't have the opportunity to exercise or you're averse to exercise for whatever reason, fidgeting movements, staccato movements, standing up, walking around, pacing, all the sort of nervous activities that we're so critical of in other people and sometimes in ourselves are actually mobilizing and oxidizing a lot of fat and a lot of energy. And while this probably won't compensate for chronic overeating, the caloric burn from this is considerable and very likely can offset a, you know, a, a meal that had excessive calories or a kind of steady state of accumul of eating too much.